855 East Washington. And check her out, Juanita Broderick. You know, uh, we were talking about how the Clintons have so much influence over the press. Uh, I, I, I have a little experience with that as well. Besides my crazy story about the, the, the Roger Stone phone call about Kellyanne Conway being CIA, you know, which was just so bizarre. And then trying to get a hold of Kathy O'Brien and have Kathy O'Brien at that table too, my God. Because you know, these other people are credible witnesses. You know, we, I, we had uh, Kathleen Willey on the show. Uh, now, we've had Juanita Broderick on the show, but I didn't interview her. William Ramsey had interviewed her uh, as my guest host that, that weekend. And I've known Paula Jones for years. I knew Paula Jones. Paula Jones never done the show, okay? And I still love Paula Jones. Uh, me and Paula Jones knew each other before I had a radio show because uh, um, we had the same agent. We had, we had the same agent as <laughs> me and Paula Jones. And uh, but now Paula Jones doesn't like me because she says I'm not conservative enough for her. She, you know, she thinks she doesn't understand my politics. Uh, so she unfriended me on Facebook after years of being friends before she came back on the public. When I first got the show, I used to beg her to come on the show, and she wasn't doing any media back then. But then helped uh, get Trump elected. But my, my, one experience that I had uh, dealing with the press as part of the Clinton campaign when I was covering the different campaign events for the radio show. We went out to California. We rode up and down in the Bernie campaign bus. We attended all the Bernie events, you know, in the press section. I'd be sitting right in between uh, the Washington Post and the LA Times, LMNOP. <laughs> LA Times, Opperman Report, Washington Post. So I'm sitting right between the Washington Post and the LA Times. And our little stations there they give you. Um, so I covered Bernie. We covered Ben Carson. We covered Trump. And we went to two events with Hillary. And let me tell you something, it's like night and day, okay? There was one event here in, in the Nevada where the, the day before we covered a Bernie event, and they were, the, the crowd was like 10,000 people. They were lined up around the, the school to get into the school. And there were so many people that he, he held a mini rally outside first, then came inside and did the rally for the people who were able to get in. But... And then we, we did Trump uh, conventions, you know, with, again, big long lines and stuff like that. But the Trump ones were the most disorganized, okay? Uh, I met Hope Hicks several times, you know, just, hey, what's the Wi-Fi? <laughs> can you please give me the Wi-Fi password? It's like, I'm going to be broadcasting in a couple of minutes. No one has the Wi-Fi password. Just chaos. Because they're all volunteers, you know, and, and, and uh, the original uh, Trump conventions, uh, 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 campaign events, he only had his security team. He had no campaign staff. He didn't even have Hopix. He had Keith Schiller and a bunch of New York cops who were running his campaign thing for him, okay? Those are the first ones. Those are really scary. But then later on, when he, he started having volunteers and stuff like that, it was a little bit the, uh, well, you know what? It was just as chaotic. It was just chaotic. You, you couldn't get the, uh, any kind of support, okay? And the Bernie events were, were better, uh, they were quite a bit better. They were, they were more professional. Now, the Clinton ones, okay, like I said, one time we, we attended a Bernie rally. It was a huge crowd. The next day, we went to a Hillary rally, and it was a tiny, no one showed up, okay? There was, like, nobody there. As a matter of fact, on the wall in the room, it said, like, uh, maximum occupancy 900. And even that room wasn't filled. And then suddenly, all these union guys, union construction workers with hard hats and tool belts came in. I had no idea what they were doing there. They thought they were doing construction. <laughs> okay. They were pulled off some job site and just brought in there to stand around and fill up the crowd. Now, I saw this. The local press saw this. No one reported on it but us. No one said a word about this. I was standing right next to the same people, the union workers that were talking about how everything was all a mess, you know, and, and Hillary was late and that was too late to go door knocking. And the Las Vegas press was standing right there, seeing the exact same thing I saw. No one reported on this, okay? Again, also, too, there was a big rally right before the election. It was a big, big one, okay, with Hillary. This is after she won the nomination. And uh, we covered that. And that was uh, so professionally run, it's mind-boggling. Like, the volunteer staff that she had were like, you could tell they were like Harvard Law grads. You know, these weren't like volunteers off the street. These were people, you know, were making $100,000 jobs. You know, you could tell by their clothes, by their suits. And when we checked in, you know, it was like, oh, what, what press output are you with? Oh, they're trying to become your friend. <laughs> they got my card. You know, they were very personable with the press. And they catered it, too. They catered it with food. 
And um, so the press totally was kissing up to them. And, you know, after the event, you need a ride. You know, you need a ride back to the hotel. We got buses here to help with the press. You know, with the Bernie campaign, you had to pay to get on the bus. But they wanted to give us give you Ubers and rides and stuff. They, they had catering food. And at that event, uh, Hillary had these union thugs, okay, well, scouring the crowd. And they grabbed a guy who had a, a Hillary for Prison t-shirt on. And they beat the crap out of him, okay? We're, we're the only ones, too, that have pictures of this. Uh, they beat the crap out of this guy, and they ripped the shirt off his body, and they dragged him out of there. And, I, you know, they handed him over to the cops. But meanwhile, it was the guys who roughed him up who should have been arrested, uh, but they weren't. Now, I even made a joke. <laughs> okay, we were there. This is the one, too, where, where uh, Victoria has pictures of herself with all the people from CNN and stuff like that and MSNBC. And some of the pictures are on my Facebook page. Uh, but while I was broadcasting there from the event, and I'm right in the middle of these, you know, packs. You know, they're all eating the free food and getting their free rides back to the casino and stuff like that. And Hillary makes this comment about, uh, <laughs> there's a line of people all the way around the block. And I says, yeah, they're Haitians lined up to get their money back. <laughs> the people makes me, like, look over, like, who's this guy? Opperman report. Who's he? Because <laughs> no one dared. To, to raise a peep, a negative peep about the Clintons. Uh, so that'll give you a little, a bit of an idea about uh, how the Clintons handle the press with kid gloves and, and treat them like kings. If you enjoyed tonight's show with Juanita Broderick, JuanitaBroderick.com, her book, You Better Put Some Ice on That, How I Survived Being Raped by Bill Clinton, available on Amazon. Only been out a week. It's been barely out. The gang's still wet. Um, Check out our, our section, the, the member section at OppermanReport.com. If you enjoy these shows that we give it for free on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, uh, support these shows by becoming a member of our member section where we have all kinds of additional content. I just did a 90-minute interview with Michael the Black Man. He's the guy you see for Blacks for Trump who stands behind Trump, and he was involved in this crazy cult, Yahweh Ben Yahweh cult involved in 15 murders. Uh, fascinating interview. It was a little hostile. The guy was screaming at me. I, I put in 90 minutes of getting screamed at by this guy. And I did it for you. <laughs> okay. So now you got you to gotta show your love and support back. OppermanReport.com. Join the member section and help support the show. And if you want to advertise here, let me tell you something. I made a little joke about the potato juice the other night. I've got a thousand emails about it. So if, if you want to advertise your website, your business, your event, shoot me a line at OppermanReport.com. 